if you have never experienced marriage how will you compare it with the true joy which you will experience in meditativeness if you haven't experienced sensory titillations you know the joy coming out of the objects and money and power and all that how will you understand the fickleness of all these things so even that is important world is not a bad place we never call it a bad place i you will never find me saying it a bad place what i am trying to make you understand is that your attachment and foolishness is bad big house not bad money not bad doing job not bad marriage not bad children nothing is bad but when you think they will alone make you happy and when you forget they will die and the bodies are mortal this makes you unhappy and not realizing your own self makes you unhappy and miserable so if you are miserable then nobody else but you are responsible not any unseen god not your destiny not your karma nothing it's your stupidity let me quote you one example there were these four great yogis four yogis who were brothers and it is said that they were born directly from brahma the purana says from brahma the all creation has happened so this three headed god which is depicted you know pictorially so brahma created these four brothers and they were born enlightened and they were great yogis by birth you know like you are born a diamond you are born a rose so they were born enlightened and they always remained in one age and that is 8 years of age they never grew to be nine and they were renunciates they never went into see why they say they remain eight because it is only when the adolescent comes then the hormones come and then this you know so by saying they were just eight it means that their mind always remain like a child so no sexual attractions and no 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 not no foolishness you know pertaining to this but they say even physically they they always remain eight the great yogis one day the four always remain together so they were all sitting one day and meditating and deep in meditation and shiva and parvati they were crossing the skies see if today you have your helicopters and planes they had something you know now now they are soon coming up with those um flying taxis right they'll pick you up and they'll they will not not move on the roads you are not surprised you see this is technology say if i say shiva and parvati were in the sky you will say, how come why not if you don't understand their technology doesn't means it didn't exist it so shiva and parvati were in the skies and shiva says oh parvati look the four great yogis are sitting and meditate let's go and meet them so mahadev and parvati come down to earth and they are the yogis are just enjoying their inner bliss they are absolutely not aware that shiva himself has come and they don't even care actually one who has found the eternal bliss they don't even care for mahadev also what would they get what would they seek from them nothing so mahadev ji is admiring the beauty and the, the sanctity and the peace of these yogis but parvati got angry she said how come they they are not getting up they are not greeting us they are not 
prostrating, they are not saluting, they are not praising, they are not offering us anything. They are sitting like animals. But before Mahadev could stop, she cursed them, you should be an animal. And they all converted into camels. And Shivji was stunned. What did you do, Devi? She said they deserved it. Now after the time, they regain their body consciousness. And what they find? Their body is no more human. Their body is animal. And they also understood the story. That Devi Parvati has cursed them. Now, were they unhappy? No. Were they sad? No. Did they fight with Shivji? No. What did they say? They said, Devi Parvati, we are so thankful to you now. Devi said, what for? She's still angry. So she says, what for? The Sanatan named the yogi, he said, Devi, when we had a human body, we had to go some place to drink water, to get some food or take a bath. And we had all those rules applied on us. You know, being human, the ethics come. Now the body is animal. We don't have to go anywhere. So, you know, sometimes deep in meditation, because they had some water and you have to pee, so you have to go to bathroom. Now we are animals, we can just pee here. And if we are hungry, we have a tall neck, we'll raise our head up and we have these trees and leaves, we'll just eat. So you have saved us from that nonsense. Take a bath, clean your clothes, get food. And if you have to, you know, answer the nature's call, then go for that too. Now we can just be in meditation and we don't have to do anything at all. So Devi, you are great. Devi said, what to do with these people? Eh? I can't even make them upset. I am cursing them and they are thanking me. And then Mahadev says, said to Devi, he said, Devi, this is the eloquent status of a yogi. And nothing can disturb or perturb them. And nothing can make them unhappy. And you unnecessarily was angry that they are disrespecting me. But the truth is this, when a yogi, when an aspirant is in deep samadhi, this is the biggest worship of me if somebody is in samadhi. And when somebody is in samadhi, see Devi, we came to have darshan of these yogis. I am happy and I would worship that yogi who is in the samadhi. So it was a useless thing on your part to feel offended. From them, can you see the greatness? Parvati said, oh yes, now I can see that. So she took the curse back. May you be the humans again. And voila, their body changed into humans. Now with the human form, four of them folded their hands and said, Thank you Devi for giving this human form again. Now at least we can fold our hands. Being camels, we couldn't do that. <laughs> now we can fold our hands and sing glory of Mahadev and sing glory of you. And you are so great, O oh mothers. We prostrate and we thank you and we salute you. And then Devi folded her hands and bowed to these yogis. And she said, I bow to you and I am humbled seeing your greatness. 
and seeing the loftiness of your jnana. It is the Guru who gives you this ability to remain unperturbed in spite of all difficulties and troubles coming in your life. It is going to be game of thorns and flowers. Dark nights and sunny days. Life is going to be this splendora of events. Some fantastic, some drastic, some dramatic, some melodramatic. And the Guru gives the jnana. And jnana is not just a bunch of words. I remember somebody approached me and he said that my daughter is so inspired from you. I wish that you should train her to be like you. I said, what do you mean? He said, the way you speak, the way you sing, I want my daughter to be trained so that she can be, you know, a perfect copy of you. I said, well, I haven't yet made the syllabus of my institute where I will teach all this stuff. The day I open up my institute, your daughter will be the first one to have that training. And I'll personally sign out this certificate. You are certified to give these courses. <laughs> Many times people say, how many books have you read? Can you give the names so that we too can read all those and get all the jnana? I said, sure. But in books, you will find words, not the meanings. Theories, not the experiences. The experiences come only in presence, in association, in benign presence, in auspicious presence of the Master. Something transpires which is unexplainable. It is beyond words, can't be said, it can only be felt. Guru doesn't just give the knowledge. Any intellectual or professor of Vedanta can do that. But that knowledge will be just bookish, minus the essence, it would be like plastic flowers. Looks so nice, but a plastic flower doesn't have the fragrance or beauty or lustrousness in it. So Guru is not the plastic flowers. And a flower which is alive alone can give you the beautiful fragrance. Similarly, only a living guru can give you the essence of truth, not a dead one. A dead one might be greatest, but today is of no use to you. Like a picture of a cat is not a cat, and picture of a rose is not a rose. Similarly, a picture of a guru is not a guru. So don't be too... You know, people are very happy with dead gurus. It's very convenient, because this guru isn't going to yell from the photo. Eh? Photo to bolegi ni. मरा हुआ गुरु फोटो से बाहर निकल के कुछ डांटेगा थोड़े ना एक बेवकूफ क्या कर रहा है वन ऑफ स्वामी जी हूं मैं नो ही वॉज नरेटिंग हिस्स स्टोरी ही लिव्ड विद हिज मास्टर ही बिकेम अ सन्यासी एट वेरी यंग एज एंड देन लिव्ड विद हिज गुरु फॉर ऑलमोस्ट ट्वेल्व फिफ्टीन ईयर्स सो दे वुड लिव ऑन द बैंक्स ऑफ रिवर्स So sleep over there also. And the Guru would wake up at 3 a.m. And they were young, 16, right? And that's the age when the sleep is so beautiful at 3 a.m. 
you don't get up at 3 a.m. But the guru would wake up at 3 a.m. And then he used to wear the khada, the wooden sandal. So not only he would wake up at 3 a.m., he would walk to all his students and yell, get up. It happened so. Uh, one time, one of their um, brother disciple was so deep, he did not even hear. So Guru said again, get up. He still is sleeping. Then Guru used to carry a big wooden staff. So he banged, not on his head, just close to the head. And he said, Phutgi, 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 Phutgi. <laughs> broken, broken, my skull is broken, broken, broken. And everybody said, no it is not. And he said, yes it is. Swamiji said that sometimes we would wake up, rush to the river, take the bath. But before the bath we had to obviously answer the nature's call. So we would be sitting, you know, no western toilets, jungle, jungle mein mangal. So they would be sitting, you know, the Indian way, on their feet. And he said, we would still doze off. <laughs> and then Guruji is yelling, Hua nahi! Aren't you done with pooping? And we would rush, Aya Guruji, Aya Guruji, Aya Guruji. Huh? When he narrated me this story, Swamiji must be physically um, 65 or 6 years old at that time. And he had tears in his eyes. Recalling that story, he had those, you know, tears in his eyes. How great the compassion of the Master is. To teach us, he would take care of us and he would watch and remind us that you are not supposed to waste even a minute of your life. Don't sleep, get up. Serving the Master, being with the Master, listening to the Master. Swamiji said, whatever I am today, it is the grace of my Guru. It's not the grace of the holy books, the scriptures or the Shastras. It's the grace of the Master. Mind is lazy, mind is inert, mind is stupid. It is only the provoking and rebuking and motivations which a Guru alone can give. But if Guru is dead, nothing of this sort is going to happen. So out of great convenience, people are very happy with dead Gurus. Because now nobody is going to challenge their ego or inertia. A living guru will do that. If a guru is guru, will do that. 